that's the the great thing about a brilliant artist is that you can take on their perspective. You're so right. Like music is so tribal, but it's also very medicinal. And that's uh, something we're going to talk about today as well. Um, yeah. I know you're an ambassador for the wonderful organisation Music for Dementia. Tell me a little bit about why you decided to, to work with them. They approached me actually three years ago, I guess it would be. My dad had, had just died and he didn't have dementia. He, he had other health problems. But at the end of his life, music had been a really important part of support in him and a, a way for us to connect. So after losing my dad, I was I was thinking about the experience that I had, had with him and how I could use what I knew about music and, and my access to music, ability to make playlists and DJ and all that kind of stuff. And I, I was just thinking stuff like, well, maybe there'll be a local care home who will let me go in and, and make some playlists for them or help residents get, get access to music. But then I got a call from Music for Dementia saying they were working on a much bigger project that was attempting to do the same thing, that was attempting to bring music into dementia care. And so the timing was just, I mean, weird, first of all. But second of all, I, I couldn't resist the opportunity to get involved because everybody who loves music knows how powerful it is. But here is a, an actual kind of syndrome that this can be massively effective with. I already knew some of the statistics, but in the years that I've worked with Music for Dementia, I've visited care homes, taken part in music therapy sessions with residents, and I've seen firsthand the incredible effect that music can have on people who are suffering from dementia. You know, it's now backed up by quite hard science. You know, there are a number of studies into this, and there was one showing that music therapy actually reduced the symptoms of dementia and the need for medication by up to about 67%. So there is some incredible research going into this as well. You say, Lan, you've actually, you know, you've gone to care homes and you've been in those sessions. What exactly yeah. happens in a music therapy session? Well, it depends. There are all kinds of different ones. So music can be used therapeutically. Just something straightforward is listening to it, you know, just having music on in the background that, that can help. Music for Dementia actually have their own radio station where you can choose by era, whether you are a carer or someone in a care home setting. And, and you know, you have someone in your life who has dementia, who wants to have better access to music. You just do that. But then there are also incredible things where artists perform for um, residents in care homes. So at Bridgeside, where I was, the Spitz Charitable Trust, they go in once a week and they do these gigs for the residents there. Now, I have seen gigs at the Spitz when it was a music venue and, and you know, you could just go along and see the Libertines or whoever it would have been back then. And those performers, they give it everything. It's as if they're up on stage. You know, you wouldn't think that they're in a care home. They're given 100% to these residents. And it's just like this miraculous electric thing to be sitting, watching these incredibly gifted artists. But then there's this extra layer where, you know, with music therapy, where people can participate. And that's really beneficial. There's one in, in amazing resident that I, I met at Bridgeside called John. And when he came into the care home, he was actually incredibly unwell. They, they, they didn't think he had long left to live. And and music therapy has been a massive part in turning things around for him. He He has gone on to really come out of his shell. And he was writing a song with one of the music therapists. So they were writing a song, I think it was about stealing a horse. It was sort of a Western. <laughs> At one stage he was he was saying, what type of horse is this, John? And he was like, a Palomino, a Palomino. I was like, oh my God, this guy definitely grew up watching Westerns, just like my dad did. And I think they're actually going to record uh, John's track professionally. So there are all kinds of different approaches you can take to it. But the overarching theme, I suppose, is, is joy. You know, that actually, if you're living with dementia, it does doesn't mean that you can't have moments of joy and connection and and music is a fantastic way to facilitate that. And it, it does sound like the work the charity is doing it is incredible. Like I said, bringing like musicians in and bands in and and such, um, you know, a high standard. I, I remember, right, growing up, I grew up in a small town and there's quite a lot of care homes. And me and my friends went in at Christmas to do some Christmas carols to be like, sure, yeah. you know, we'll sing. And I remember when the residents turned around, I was like, oh, I didn't really like that. <laughs> I was I mean, like, yeah, sorry, you need to get some decent musicians in. This is the thing, though. You've got to be good because be good. they're going to tell you the truth. They will tell you. They will very much tell you the truth. I did once do a music therapy session um, with a lady who was in, very insistent that the only song we were going to do was All the Nice Girls Love a Sailor, but she would only do the rude version. Oh, <laughs> she, she was from the East End and she was like... This it was it was the only acceptable version for her. So, you know, you've got to you've got to come in with your A yeah. game, I think. 